going to do some comparing fractions today. Um, this is a review on what we've done, just like everything else. Um, will kind of be a review for the next week. Um, but we are going to go through a little bit of a uh, mini lesson today, just kind of review some stuff. Um, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of see how this goes. Uh, so let's get started. All right, so we're going to do the St. Patrick's Day party. Uh, we were not at school for St. Patty's Day, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pretend that we were. On March 17th, the teachers uh, will celebrate St. Patrick's Day with a party after school. The teachers will dress in green, play games, and eat green refreshments. The refreshments will include veggies, fruit, cupcakes, cookies, green punch, and other delicious treats. Yay. All right, Ms. Hasty is responsible for bringing the punch to the party. Let me just tell y'all, that looks just like that nasty celery juice that I've been drinking. Um, I mean, it looks exactly like it. That's just, no. Ugh, ugh. All right, so here is your task. Now, the way this is going to work um, is I have a Google form attached to this assignment, and there are two questions on this um, lesson, and so each one is within the Google form. And so you guys will go through and fill in your responses and submit them to me so that I can get you a little bit of feedback on that and just tell you yes or no or what you need to work on and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so the punch recipe calls for three-fourths of a liter of ginger ale, soda, two gallons of green Kool-Aid. At Walmart, Ms. Hasty found six different brands of ginger ale on sale. Which brand of ginger ale should Ms. Hasty buy to have enough ginger ale for the punch recipe? And then you can see all our different size containers and all our different brands. Okay. So again, look at the question. Which brand of ginger ale should Ms. Hasty buy to have enough ginger ale for the punch recipe? Okay. So what I want you to do is you're going to pause the video for just a few seconds or however long it takes you to work. And um, this will be the first question on your Google form. Okay. So I want you guys to give a, a shot there and, and see if you can figure that out. And I want you to think about the strategies that we used. Um, and since you're not there for me to talk to you, um, we, we used our common denominator strategy. Okay. Um, we used models. Uh, we used cross multiplication, all those kinds of things, okay, to compare and order fractions. I would like you guys to practice um, common denominators, all right? So list out the common denominators for, for these, and then you can sort and order them, okay? All right, go ahead and pause the video for a few seconds, or a few minutes, I should say, and um, get to work on that first problem. All right, good time. So hopefully you've been able to kind of work through that and submit it, or you will submit that on the Google form um, for me to look at when you're done. So let's move on. Oops. There we go. All right, so um, you can see again, it's got all the different sizes and stuff. And then our final question says that at the party, Miss Hasty and Miss Marley each ate half of a cookie. Miss Hasty said they both ate the same amount, but Miss Marley disagreed. She thought they ate different amounts. Okay. How could they both be correct? Okay. And explain your thinking in words, pictures, and numbers. Now on the Google form, I took out the word pictures on that question because I don't know how you could draw me a picture on a Google form, but you can definitely tell me in words and numbers, how would it be possible? And you need to explain it to me in words and numbers. Okay. Don't just give me an example. I want you to explain your thinking to me on how they could have eaten the same amount. Okay. So that will be the second question on your Google form. Um, if we go down here, I did want to just real quick, and it's going to be hard because I'm trying to do this with my um, mouse, so I don't really have a pen to write with, so you have to bear with me. It's going to look kind of messed up. Um, let's just do a couple things real quick. Um, I don't want to do one half. Let's do one fourth. And two sixth. All right. So if we were going to find the common denominator for these, we would list out the factors, right? The greatest common factor. No, no, no. God, listen to me. I'm trying to simplify. Least common multiple. Okay? Least common multiple. So up here, and I think I'm going to type this. It'll be easier for me. Least common multiple. All right? So we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20... Four. All right, now let's look at um, four, six. Six, 12, 
18, 24. All right. So I've listed out my least common multiple, or my multiples, I should say. And what is the smallest one that they have in common? You might want to say, oh, 24, but it's not. Okay, we were able to look and see that 12 is actually going to be our uh, denominator that we want. Okay, now for this, it doesn't really matter that much. If you did 24, you'd still get it right. But we always like to kind of shoot for the lowest number. Okay, all right, so ask yourself, okay, what do we do to make this into 12th and this into 12th? Okay, you should be saying that you need to multiply this one by 3 thirds. Okay, to get 3 twelfths. And we're going to multiply this one times 2 halves and get 4 twelfths. So by this, we can see that 2 sixths is greater than 1 fourth. Okay, now that doesn't have anything to do with the problem except that I just wanted to do an example for you on how to find a common denominator so that you can compare fractions okay and that's going to help you now if you go back to the first one you might have missed it or you might have had some trouble now you can go back and redo your work okay um, before you submit it to me all right so that's going to be it for now guys and i hope that helps you there'll be some other practice work assignments up there for you have a good one